6,500 miles from the mainland United States in the Central Pacific, lies a group of islands collectively known as Micronesia. Although the total area of Micronesia is 3 million square miles, its land mass is just half the size of the state of Rhode Island. 100,000 people live on these islands, a trust territory of the United States since the Second World War. In 1967, the U.S. Department of Interior sought bids for regularly scheduled airline service in Micronesia. A new modern service was required to help bring the area into the 20th century. But this new service posed problems of great magnitude for any airline. The Guam Daily News best summed up the situation. They've got thousands of problems ahead of them. They've got tourist potential, but no tourists. And if they get tourists, they've got no hotels to put them in. They've got thousands of miles of ocean, but few people to haul, few airports to land in, fewer mechanics to service the planes. The area was remembered primarily for its rich World War II history, which unfolded throughout Micronesia's Marianas, Marshall, and Caroline Island chains. Thus the challenge was made. The situation seemed impossible. Who would answer this awesome challenge? I'm Robert F. Six, Chairman of the Board and Chief Executive Officer of Continental Airlines, headquartered in Los Angeles, California. Continental Airlines has always been interested in expansion from a small regional carrier in the Pacific. And uh, after the original Pacific case, which we were not too successful, we looked upon ways and means of putting our routes in the Pacific. We were familiar with the then contract operation that Pan American Airways had with the Micronesian Islands. At that time, they were served primarily by flying boats with very infrequent, unsatisfactory, and unreliable service. Kenny Charles, an old friend, was the chairman board of Aloha Airlines I've known for many years. Kenny was thoroughly familiar with that territory. I had received a telephone call from Bob Six of Continental Airlines inviting me to join him one evening in Los Angeles, at which time he brought about a concept which would bring together not only Continental Airlines, but the lower airlines and a group of Micronesians to start Air Micronesia. Out of that emerged an extraordinary proposal which was made to the Department of Interior, which would bring immediately to the Trust Territory modern three-engine jet aircraft. Mr. Six, however, had great visions, and he said to me, we have to go all the way. There is a commitment that we will have to make to the territory, not only in our desire to bring jet aircraft immediately to the territory, but I will make a commitment that we will construct modern, comfortable hotel facilities in each of these districts in the Trust Territory. So we committed ourselves to hotels in uh, Guam, Truck, Karor, and Saipan. They're quite lovely hotels, as those people that have stayed in them. The Saipan Hotel is probably the finest, most beautiful hotel in the Central Pacific today. But in retrospect, none of them really get into the problem. Pan American operated that sort of with the back of your left hand, I call it. It never had top executives out there to take a look at the real problems. Our people got into it and seriously looked at it. Dominic Renda, currently the president, chief executive officer of Western, was hired by Continental in our regulatory affairs and Micronesian, and was made president of Air Micronesia. He did a superb job, both politically and operating-wise, in helping uh, run Air Micronesia out there. Red Steuben and Barney Barnwell were the two technical people in Continental that made it possible to fly jets out there and made it possible to convince the FAA and our board of directors you could, could operate jets out there. Hi, I'm Barney Barnwell. I'm director of flight crew training and standards for Continental Airlines. We knew from the very beginning that we had an uphill battle uh, in getting Micronesia for Continental without putting jet aircraft in out there. And the ace in the hole was the jet, and Mr. Six held the ace in the deck. All I did was go out there and really and truly confirm what Mr. Six had known months and months before any of us were told anything about it. And it's been a, a unique experience, uh, one that very few people have an opportunity to share in life and being in the birth of an airline. The operation was very exciting to me. Uh, the thing that impressed me most was the tremendous contrast 
of the modern day jet airplane and the very primitive facilities at uh, each airport that we went into, especially those in uh, places like Yap and Truck. At that time, there were no administration buildings at all. Uh, total airport facilities consisted of probably uh, one or two uh, thatched roof huts. Uh, the runways were coral, were covered with livestock that had to be chased off before uh, each takeoff and landing. Uh, communications were uh, very primitive, and yet the 727 is an ideal airplane for that type of operation. And uh, there was no doubt in our minds that we could operate through these islands with a perfect safety record and high reliability. Well, on the inaugural run, it was amazing. Many of the people in Micronesia had never seen a jet airplane. They'd been serviced by Pan Am and an old DC-4 that used to run around out there. And this was the first jet that had ever come through the territory. As a result, the word had gotten out on the radio, the, the local radio, and there would be as many as uh, eight and 10,000 people at these uh, small island airports. We started out here with two SA-16s, one DC-6, and uh, one 727 which is the one that's here right now. We uh, had no runway at all at Ponape. We flew the amphibians into Ponape, landed on the water, serviced it on a seaplane ramp. The DC-6 flew Yap and Garor the first five years because of the runway conditions. And uh, since then, we've, uh, we've eliminated the seaplanes. We've eliminated the DC-6 after five years. We've got an all-jet operation out here. Well, this evolution of the air service that has transpired was also changed drastically with the implementation of the service to Japan. This, for the first time, allowed the air service access to its prime source of potential tourist traffic. Uh, and I think this was the turning point for Air Micronesia and our entry into Japan and our success in marketing not only Saipan, uh, but the rest of Micronesia as a tourist destination for the Japanese tourist is what it's all about. Well, we laughingly joke about the word impossible at Continental because we accomplish the difficult daily. The impossible just takes a little longer. I am Father Kostigan. I've been living on the island of Ponape since 1947. I came as a missionary and I was only here a very, very short time when I realized that man is made up of body and soul and that the body was very badly neglected in Micronesia. And that is basically the reason for the Ponape agriculture and trade school, which we have built over the past roughly 20 years. It is devoted to the boys and girls of Micronesia. We bring students from all the islands of Micronesia, and of course for this we thank God for Air Mike or Air Micronesia. We call it Air Mike, uh, which has made it so simple an operation for us to bring our youngsters in and send them home at the end of the year. When you try to estimate the impact of Air Micronesia on the trust territory, I have to be personal. For the first 20 or more years that I was here, if you wanted to go to Guam, it was six days by ship. A little later, we got some old PBY seaplanes. We had no airport on Bonapé, and it took you about 11 or 12 hours to get to Guam. Then Air Micronesia came in, but unfortunately they couldn't land on Ponape with those beautiful jets. So we had to get on a SA-16, which is a seaplane, and shuttle over to truck, which I did one afternoon. I remember distinctly it was a Saturday afternoon. And after about four hours, we landed in truck, and we stepped off the seaplane, and there was this beautiful 727 with a big Air Micronesia flag on it. 
and we were directed that our plane was late and we should immediately board the jet. And as I walked up those back steps, I got the breath of beautiful air conditioning and the soft music. Uh, this cannot be Micronesia any longer. This has got to be John F. Kennedy Airport. Castellani or Father Castigan? I think Air Micronesia was the first agency that came into Micronesia with that same philosophy of taking as many Micronesian young men and young women, putting them into the system, giving them training, giving them responsibility, giving them authority, and accepting them as full co-equals and partners in development. And this is very obvious as you go around the territory, every manager on every island is today a Micronesian. Panape, Panape, this is Guam. Uh, are you happy? Guam, Guam, Panape. Rith Marleka is the station manager in Panape. Uh, but today he's at the Guam offices on business. At the Panape City ticket office, it's business as usual. Oh, Casilelia. I'd like to uh, go to Denver. Denver. Ticketing and flight information. Okay. okay, the flights to Denver are everyday flight from Honolulu. Okay, and from here to Honolulu are Monday, Wednesdays, Thursday, and Saturdays. Morning, Air Mike Office. Uh, Reservations. Communications. This is the last of it and I've got to get all the spirits to go on today. And air freight, the lifeline of Micronesia. All accomplished with that familiar air mic spirit. Since it's flight day, the entire island's activity centers at the terminal. As you can see, our jets still draw big crowds. At the airport ticket counter, it is not uncommon to receive odd items as personal baggage, like this rice bag, for example. We ship many taped cardboard boxes and even wrapped fish, like these, as passenger baggage. It all comes under the heading of Micronesian Samsonite. When the ground personnel have completed their security check and the passengers have boarded the aircraft, our flight crew takes over, making the passengers comfortable and familiarizing them with safety procedures. At this time, we would like to familiarize you with emergency equipment on board our 727 aircraft and preparing for takeoff on the flight deck. Very good. Eighty knots. That's our famous air mic teamwork. The specially designed galley is the focal point of our in-flight personal service. From here, our flight attendants serve drinks and food to our passengers. The flying out here is special because of our spirit. And our spirit is created by a certain kind of magic that the people give to us. It's an infectious kind of a magic. It uh, makes you happy, makes you want to give. Micronesia is an experience by itself. The airplane is small, it's a 727. Uh, the reason that it is uh, such a good service, 
mainly uh, the girls are marvelous. The service uh, is first class and it's like a family. pilots come from the domestic system of Continental Airlines. They bid into the Air Mike uh, base at Honolulu just as they would any domestic base. However, there's a change that seems to come about when they come to Micronesia. They seem to be swept up by the, the spirit of Micronesia. All our takeoffs out here are weight limited or runway limited or temperature limited. We can only very rarely carry the maximum weight that this airplane is designed to carry. We're normally handicapped by the length of the runway. Some of the strips are uh, coral, just crushed coral. They're actually old World War II uh, fighter strips that were used by the Japanese uh, Air Force during World War II. They're rough, they're short, they have water at both ends or dips at both ends. and. Uh, I think they're hard on the airplane, but the machine stands up unbelievably well under these conditions. Air Micronesia is a very small, close-knit organization. I think all the pilots, all the hostesses, we know each other on a first-name, friendly basis. We know most of the station managers. Uh, the people that do come out here are, are pleased to be here. They feel like they've accomplished something by getting into this Air Micronesia operation. Before they know it, they become wrapped up in, a, in an overall commitment that the company has made out here to the Micronesian islands, the Micronesian people. And I think everyone within six months or so finds themselves involved in things that they never believed they would have come out here originally for. It's a totally different change of pace after a while. Continental Air Mike is manned by Micronesians from the ground service all the way up to the inside the plane. So you have this feeling of Micronesians from the ground all the way up to the inside the airline. We've seen the pilots of uh, Continental Air Micronesians during uh, about two years ago when the strike came about. Yet the pilots for Air Mike still flown the planes in and out of Micronesia. That means that they do, the personnel, the airline, do care about the development of these areas, welfare and well-being of the people in Micronesia. As you can see right here, we're, uh, we're improving our runway to meet standards of FAA rules and regulations. We'll pave it, and it's under construction now. Hopefully by 1981, the runway will be completed and that it would serve as a best runway for Continental Air Mike. We hope that uh, Continental Air Mike will fly in night and day when the runway is completed. Truck without Air Mike Tunisia would mean that we have to go back about 200 years ago. Nothing comes in, nothing goes out. In many other areas, education, economic, social, or what have you, will be lost. It's like a boat drifting. That's what it means. And the before takeoff. And I skid. Two cap. Strobe. On. Stero. On. Window heat. On. Pedo heat. On. Transponder. On. And the Doppler's the way you want them. There's 80 knots. Looking for 112. V1, rotate. Oh, great, you're up. And the reason why we have a uh, mechanic on board the airplane is because there's nobody out here uh, within the districts that's qualified to work on the aircraft. So instead of stationing people throughout the uh, islands, it's a lot easier just to carry one guy and uh, have him do all the uh, necessary work for the aircraft. My main job up here is monitoring the aircraft's uh, equipment up here. And if there's any malfunctions, my responsibility is to try to figure out 
what's wrong with the uh, equipment, uh, troubleshoot the system, and try to fix it once we land. There are some cases once in a while where you're not able to fix the problem, so you uh, have to make your own mind up what you're going to do because you're the only one out there. I guess what makes me proud with uh, this airline is that it's part of me. It's just part of, I feel like I'm part of uh, the airlines. As far as I'm concerned, we're the best. Coming up on 500 feet, plus eight. We are on final approach to Guam, the hub of our operation. It's our center for flight attendants, reservations, maintenance, and air freight. We also provide ramp and maintenance contract services for other airlines landing here. 300 feet, plus two. Here in Guam alone we have truckies, we have Chinese, we have Filipinos, we have Palauans. Myself, I'm a Panamanian. Uh, we have statesiders. This here is actually the melting pot. It's actually the hub of Air Micronesia. On a day-to-day -day basis and even in the evening time, everybody just joins together and works together and it rubs off on even the continental statesiders out here. Uh, the uh, ramp agents and the overall terminal operations personnel on Guam have a very, very high degree of pride. When asked to do something, they do it right away and they do it with a very, very uh, high degree of uh, professionalism and concern. We have something here that is sort of invisible. You don't see it however you feel it, and that is what I call esprit de corps. Even our management employees here are not afraid of getting their hands soiled, getting out there and pitching in as one of their employees. Our employees respect that effort, and they know that whenever the need arises, they have someone behind them that will back them and support them in their efforts. Air Mike started in 1968. At that time, we have a very small space with about three people working under cargo. Now, with the service we have, we have this large amount of building here with 18 people, and um, it's just one big family. When I bring in people for an interview, I always ask them what would be their future goal. The first time I talk to the person, he says to me, I want your job. I like those kind of people. These are the people that are gonna make this company grow and continue growing. Nine, and we're very proud of that fact. We boarded almost 26,000 passengers out here, which is just incredible considering the conditions we fly with and the three airplane fleet that we have. I think most of that is due to the, the caliber of the people that we have out here. The, the agents here are hired on the same basis, I think, as they hire reservations agents anywhere in the mainland. They have to be outgoing. They've got to care about people's problems. They've got to want to get concerned and to help the traveling public. Service uh, means to me is making the customer happy, doing an extra job for them, and um, they asked us if we have a, a first class fare and we told them that we regret to say we don't have any first class fare to Honolulu, the island hopping, but we do give a first class service. In this kind of business, you got to be able to smile. No matter how hard the day, you got to be smart to your customers. That means we'll make your passengers happy when he comes to the counter and you show the big smile on the customers that make his day and your day more easier. Our department morale is different than uh, you would see in a Los Angeles, our domestic operation, simply because we are small. We get to know everyone in our, our operation, from the flight crews down to uh, the uh, regional sales reps. I'd like to introduce Justino Ridal. Justino Ridal is one of our original A&P mechanics that came out of Palau and went to Honolulu to study. This is our jet engine for our Air aircraft. And due to the tough flying conditions, the uh, life is halved and the cost of operation is doubled. The engine change procedure takes half the time as it does in our domestic counterparts. Now I'd like to introduce you to the world's largest aircraft hangar. We work here rain or shine. The 
Air Mike family plays together as well as works together. A management employee softball game gives everyone the opportunity to show their athletic prowess and blow off some steam. Is he safe? Is he out? Oh well, let's eat. Dinner is served. Okay. Doesn't anybody want to eat? Yeah! <laughs> Fiestas are a Micronesian art. The employees out here devote tremendous energy and time on the job making this airline what it is. By the same token, when the end of the day or the end of the shift comes, we like to get together as people away from the job, and I guess we do a pretty good job having fun as well as the effort we put forth when we're actually on the job. Part of the beauty of Air Micronesia is the area itself, and our 727s are probably the fastest tour buses in the world. Uh, being this point off the right side, you got a good view of the new bridge that connects the island of Bubbled Up. From here on down will be all the rock islands, and we'll be able to get a little lower and take a good view of them from uh, the whole bit and all the way down to Palilu. flight days we spend most of our time at the CTO where we sell tickets uh, getting involved in uh, you know releasing or accepting air freight and uh, you know making reservations for our passengers here is the 78 uh, 1978 we we had a fire you know that completely destroyed our uh, city ticket office uh, most of our, most of the items we use for our uh, airport operation were destroyed Day Miho, uh, uh, Dan Perz, and some other uh, uh, company officials were able to come down uh, the very day we had the fire to assist us uh, get back in operation. Okay, we were able to get the plane out because of the uh, fact uh, all the employees uh, uh, were able to come, you know, and pitched in. Uh, some of them were uh, scheduled uh, to be on vacation at that time, but. Uh, because of the fire, they, they reported to work, uh, you know, in order to get the operation going. Hi, my name is Alex Lozama. I am a Panapean. My position in the Air Micronesia is the Regional Service Supervisor for the Western Region. And here I am in the land of stone money. In Yap, the traditional value is very important. Therefore, in Air Marquinesia, the station here has to be very sensitive about the traditional values. I have uh, known and associated with uh, Air Micronesia for the last uh, 11 years, and I've been very impressed with the 
work uh, they've uh, been doing here in Micronesia, especially here uh, in India. I think uh, the people who work uh, the office here is uh, very good people, and I feel at home every time I uh, visit their office. I see that they have uh, genuine interest uh, in what they are doing. All around, I'm very impressed with uh, what they stand for here in Micronesia. Okay, this girl here is Antonia Mugunfa, and uh, she's a student in uh, on a job training. She's uh, attending Yap High School. It's uh, one of our local high school here on the island. And uh, we each year we have uh, some student on the job training. Hopefully that sometimes in the future they will be working for Air Micronesia. As Flight 652 from Guam lands in Yap, it blows an unprecedented three tires due to an anti-skid problem. Now we have an exciting opportunity to witness Air Mike teamwork in action. Justino Ridal, the in-flight mechanic, and First Officer Bill Smith discuss the plan of action. And Ridal begins supervision of changing the tires. Captain Bohan and First Officer Smith pitch in to help jack up the plane. Second Officer Kolstad spaces 2x4s underneath the assembly for safety. What we are witnessing today is a good example of the people working together cooperatively and as a team to uh, get this thing fixed so it can live here in lots of uh, daylight. This airplane uh, land here this morning around 11 o'clock and got a flat tire and they had this uh, airplane, military airplane flew in with some tools and tires, spare tires and another uh, commercial airline flown in uh, with the mechanic to fix these things. This is a very good example of uh, what I um, mean when I say the people who uh, work for the Air Micronesia work as a team and very dedicated people. Uh, I've been involved in a couple things like this with Air Mike. And, uh, the whole, to me, the whole thing is performance. When you have something with, that demands something out of the ordinary, such as a situation like this, where we had, a, we had to work uh, to beat the sun down, so to speak, and uh, we didn't have time to go around and beg people to do this and that and set up everything real nicely. We had to make do with what we had. And, just situations like that that seem to happen not every day but it happens quite frequently in trying to keep Air Mike alive. And, uh, I think that, that that kind of typifies the spirit of the whole thing. If everybody uh, didn't uh, contribute their effort there to get the tires changed, this airplane would have been remaining overnight instead of flying another revenue trip tomorrow into Palau. So every once in a while we've got to get out and do a little work like that. And, it uh, feels good once in a while to get out and get a little exercise. But probably all of us need a little more often. It sure doesn't take any more effort for us to pitch in and help. As a matter of fact, it's kind of nice learning about uh, what goes on there. I've never seen them change a tire here on a 727, and uh, I learned a lot today. And uh, it was sure worth it from my standpoint to uh, pitch in and help. Japan is the gateway to continental Air Micronesia's international route to Japan. It's also the home of our general offices. But I think what Air Micronesia proved was that we could do it all the way. We could hire our own people, we could train them, that we had the know-how to build an airline in a totally cross-cultural environment. Thank 
you and have a nice trip. Uh, Guam Operations, Saipan ATO, go ahead. Saipan ATO, be advised, flight number 675, 675 aircraft 475, departed Kwajalein at 0045 Zulu time, late 50 minutes, late 50 minutes, how copy? Roger, I'm copy, okay, thank you. Ben, can you post that in, please? Jim, did you hear that? Yes. Yeah. Can we get all with the guys and uh, advise them that we're running about 60 minutes late on that Narita flight, flight 675? Yeah, sure. Hey, Frank. Hi, Mr. Chris. Did you get the information on the Tokyo trip? Yes, sir, I did. And it uh, looks like uh, about 60 minutes late right now. Uh, we're going to have to do something on that, Frank. We're going to run into a crew uh, legality problem up in Tokyo. And that trip coming back tomorrow, we have a, a significant uh, tour group on that flight connecting to the tent over in Guam. So okay. what do you think is the best time we can do here in Saipan to reduce that ground time? Well, uh, maybe 15 minutes ground time, sir. Geez, Frank, I really need 10. Uh, do you think the guys could uh, give us a little extra today and maybe cut it down to 10? Well, the best that we've done is uh, 12 minutes. I'll tell you what, I'll make you guys a deal. If you can do it in 10 minutes, uh, next Saturday night I'll do the cooking down at the house and we'll have everybody over for a barbecue. How'd that be? Very good. How about seven? Uh, seven? Seven minutes, yeah. You do it in seven and I'll barbecue twice. Okay, very huh? good. That's fine. You got yourself a deal. Good. Micronesian employees that we have working here for Continental Air Mike, I find to be people like people are all over the world. I think sometimes we think that, you know, because a person's skin is perhaps a different color or they speak with a different accent, that uh, their motivations are different. Uh, the people here are very dedicated. They have a delightful sense of humor. Uh, they have a very high level of honesty and integrity. Uh, they are motivated by the same things that motivate all of us. They want to be part of the team. They want to be recognized for what they do. And in turn for that, they just give you 195%. I'm sitting here looking in the camera at the close of the filming of Air Micronesia with a very proud feeling. And looking back on the many years of work and dedication I've gone into this and in achieving the great success our Micronesian employees and our Connell employees have done today. This film started out originally as a training film. It's now developed into something totally different. And my own motivation in sitting here is just as strong today as it was many years ago when we first bid with the Department of Interior to obtain this contract. And I hope, as I sit here before the camera, that I will have many more opportunities to see all of you, not only in Micronesia, but our employees on the mainland, with the same spirit and dedication that helped start Air Mike. I am personally proud to be a part of this. Thank you very much. Thank you.